Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of what was happening in Italy over the past weekend. Grazie Bologna. Grazie Bologna. Now it is only seven points to glory. And uh, while well, my Milan heart is very much smiling, all the credit for this smile has to go to Bologna, has to go to my uh, boy Marco Anatovic and his teammates. Milan have the title in their own hands, which is more than I could ever imagine. Doesn't mean it's gonna get there yet. The remaining games, and there are now three of them, are not easy. Inter definitely has the easier run in. However, I gotta say uh, that you have the chance to control your own destiny. That is pretty, pretty remarkable, I gotta say. So, uh, very, very pleased with that one. What can I say? I mean, this is the, this will be the storyline. Yes, we had actually quite a few uh, big results uh, to the bottom as well. We have now the Champions League teams for the next season confirmed. It is the four that we had that were for quite a while already. But with Roma not winning, um, that took its own course. And so, yeah, uh, it is more or less about the title race. Uh, teeny bit who will finish up in the European spots, although even there it kind of looks sort of safe, one uh, has to say. Uh, yeah, uh, on the bottom, it is now more or less a race between two, and we might see uh, the most story team in Italy. However, also the one that has been begging to be relegated uh, is probably the one that is going down. Let's start in Bologna. Uh, the, yes. Fiorentina losing at home to Udine uh, was a shocker. 4-0 doesn't tell the story because the last two goals were uh, for stoppage time. Uh, there was the crazy 4-4 between Torino and Atalanta, uh, which, yeah, <laughs> we'll talk about that a little bit, but we have to start in Bologna. Um, this was on the Wednesday where um, April 27th. Where also uh, Liverpool played Villarreal. So uh, for me, Champions League usually takes precedence, but I knew this is an important game. Better watch it one. I pulled it on, and within three minutes, I'm, oh, this is not going my way at all. Because at that point, if Inter win out, they are the title uh, favorite. Uh, but Perisic in the third minute makes it 1 0. I thought, yeah, this has Inter win written all over it. And for the next 25 minutes, I was watching. And Inter uh, should have pulled it away. We gotta be that honest. Inter should have pulled it away at that point. Uh, they were just wasteful with their chances. And now comes my personal story into it, which adds to the um, level of nervousness or whatever that I experience at this moment. Um, for the evening, I took my shower. I put on a car shirt that my uh, friend Idris helped me get. Uh, which, of course, is uh, a re uh, blue and red. And I'm thinking, eh? and here goes my idiocy. Um, am I an idiot? I'm wearing the same colors as Bologna. Of course, they're not going to win. Yes, I am that powerful. I'm going to jinx it. Telling this to my wife, uh, who is saying, yeah, uh, you always claim that others shouldn't be super superstitious, but, but you're, in this case, you're super superstitious. I said, yes, I know it doesn't make sense, but I have the data to back it up. Please write it down. Yes, I'm gonna now write it down. Uh, <laughs> how often me wearing a shirt of the team uh, may, may accept lose. I'm not sure if I can, I can keep it up, but you know, human perception, completely off there. And I said, okay, you prob you, you, you're probably right. I'm gonna chill uh, on that. Uh, and then I said, I, I cannot watch. I'm, I'm gonna put the Champions League on now. And I'm gonna put on the second screen, I'm gonna put uh, the Bologna game. Turns out, I'm switching, flipping over, thinking nothing will happen. Turns out, while until I get the game, uh, because I'm streaming uh, from the zone, uh, until I get that running, Marco Natovic had equalized. Uh, with a complete mi mismatch on Di Marco, uh, he just can head it in. And I didn't see it live. And I tell it to my wife. I did not see this. I'm sorry, she says. No, you know what, what this means? I shouldn't watch this game. <laughs> Sometimes I, I just can't believe what I'm doing. So I'm not watching this game. 
I'm literally not watching this game. I all Liverpool. I put my phone away. I put my phone on silent. Whatever. Uh, I said no. I don't care because now it's one one. Yes, this is great already because now Milan would have their destiny in their own hands. Uh, just by the sheer fact that you know le level of points you own the head to head. I'm not watching. I'm watching Liverpool. Da, 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 da. Liverpool game is over. Uh, brushing my teeth and I'm... Um, oh yeah, there was this one game. I checked the results. 2-1 Bologna. I'm not going to watch any Inter game this season anymore. I'm not. I'm just not. And then when I saw the highlights, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, I was so giddy with excitement. I couldn't even fall asleep. I mean, I actually, for the rest of the, of the week, I was, that, I was so giddy with excitement over this result. And then I see how that final goal came. And it almost wasn't. Because it was a throw-in, I think, from Perisic and Radu, uh, who just last minute substitution came, came out, hits over the, over the ball. It was about to go over, over the goal line, but it would not have counted. From a, this would have been a corner kick. So it was very, very, very important. Very important. Uh, that Sansoda gets a touch on it on the goal line. Bologna win. And Sansoda, being a Milan fan, and this for me was the, the highlight of, of, of the kind of, I mean, you see when, when, when you watch the interview, it's really joke, uh, jokey. He, he said, well, for that goal, at least I would like to have a thank you for, from Maldini and maybe he can call, call me up and maybe he can also do a loan spell so that I can play in the Champions League next season. <laughs> boy, 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 I cannot tell you. I mean, uh, that changed everything for me. I already was very positive last weekend. Champions League was secured. Great. I was already very positive in that sense. Uh, I said, now the title is probably a step too far. And let's face it, Milan have not been playing that great. But now Inter had the blip. An enormous blip that I didn't see happening. I mean, I did not see it happening in Bologna. I actually saw it more happening in Udine, given in what form U Udine was. They messed that one up. Hand it over to uh, to, to to Milan. I mean, uh, at this point, given the tough schedule, it was still forty three fifty seven Milan, and ac actually it got a little bit more. Uh, it was Inter's favor over the weekend because uh, Inter got an away win. Uh, but Milan controlled their destiny. Yes, it was at that point. Fiorentina, Verona, um, Atalanta. And Sassuolo, which is no easy program. But if anything, Milan have been really, really good this season against opponents in the upper half of the, of, of the table. The lower half is where points have been wasted. So that at least I can take. But I, I was, my week up until the weekend went from smiling, happiness, to then increased nervousness. I mean, my wife can tell you, uh, starting Saturday, I was antsy for that Fiorentina game. We'll get to that Fiorentina game in just a little bit. Uh, I just want to mention the 4-4 between Atalanta and Torino. Uh, Atalanta season is going very much sideways. Uh, ever since they got eliminated, they were not on a good run. They have so many injuries. I think also uh, the intense South Gasparins slightly catching up with them. I do not think that this is the end of Atalanta in, by any means. But this season uh, is more or less a write-off. And it was bound to happen. Uh, the game was already 2-2 two -two at the half. Where Sanabria gave Turin an early lead. Then Muri and Derun uh, pull back, back, back to 2-1. However, Lukic, uh, 36, makes it 2-2. Um, two -two. Then Torino take a 4-2 lead through uh, goals in quick succession. Again, through Lukic and Remo Frola on goal. However, then uh, Pajalic and the Muriel penalty in the 80th for me. Put it back to 4-4. This game would have been a lot of fun to watch. Uh, probably should have watched that one over the Champions League and the Bologna Inter game. However, it didn't really matter in any way. So I already alluded to it at this point. Uh, the standings were that Milan now, it was level. Yes, there's still the little Salernitana Venezia, which will happen now uh, at this midweek. But Milan were now clear on top without games in hand. Which is something, yes, they have been at one point, but then now 
now it really looks uh, it looks straight and now we know what is happened what needs to happen and what really made me happy is when I realized that with Inter not drawing but losing Milan has a teeny tiny margin of error at that point four games left three wins one draw all that's needed three wins one draw not four wins three wins one draw and that was also a big cushion and uh we'll talk about that in a little bit more so uh at that point it was a title race you were more or less through to the champ champions league which we did and on the bottom uh Cagliari uh you know not much has changed there the big change came of course uh over the weekend um where Cagliari loses to Verona yeah this Verona side good Napoli completely thrashing Sassuolo so that actually is a result that I find a little bit poor positive but Napoli all the frustration over the past few weeks it has 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 to be linked up where you know uh retiro blah blah I mean Napoli in itself uh so many things not going right uh there it would be worth a uh, video in, in itself it was four nil at the half it was six nil uh very very late Sassuolo pulled one back uh Napoli is saying okay enough of this we may not win the title but at least we still want to show that we are a very worthy team uh a huge one was the derby between Sampdoria and Genoa because um that win more or less reads some story of any relegation trouble and puts really a heap of trouble on Genoa and the derby which is one of the most atmospheric and greatest derbies because it's not only the stadium it's also the fan base and it's not like this uh a really intense hatred it's more like the city celebrating itself in many ways it's one of those uh if you like to add, add atmosphere it is probably the one derby that it 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 it, 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 it that is really uh maybe off the beaten path but really worth your time uh and unfortunately we probably won't have it next season uh sabiri uh more or less with one of the first with the first real chance gives Sampdoria the lead Sampdoria largely the better team over that that game although Genoa had early on chances but then uh hands penalties given late on uh which would give Genoa uh the chance to draw give them maybe a chance in the relegation fight and maybe keep Sampdoria close and now full uh disclosure I want Sampdoria to stay in but I really would like that they have to fight for it so that in the last game when they play Inter they have something to play for because uh that's the problem that I see that most of the teams that Inter are playing against uh they don't have much to play for and that's not good let's just put it uh straight but at least Bologna had also nothing really to play for except for Misinis Mihalovic so yeah Milan has to has, has to do it but you know Rishito uh, steps up and his penalty is saved and you could see in the reaction uh, of the players or already they know this means probably relegation uh, you saw Rishito completely dejected afterwards needed to be from everyone consoled and and so on. it was heartbreaking stuff to be honest um a fun game between Spezia and Lazio that again uh, <laughs> no one saw you will beat Venezia 2-1. Uh, Vlahovic not happy being substituted at 2-0 up against Venezia, the last place team. Um, Allegri being so Allegri that he doesn't even want to go for a big win. So Venezia, although they are probably getting relegated, only 2-1 lost to Juve. And Juve again playing at home in a third kit jersey. Uh, yeah, go figure. Milan, Fiorentina. The game, I... As I said, I was so nervous about this game because, yes, a draw is all right. And Fiorentina, potentially the toughest of the remaining opponent, potentially. Although they have been really, really in bad shape as well. And they showed it from the beginning. I think the first 15, 20, 20 minutes, Fiorentina definitely were the better team. I would even say in the first half, Fiorentina had more of the game. However, Milan had the chances. Giroud needs to put that one away. Theo Hernandez runs clear through. If he cuts it back instead of shooting it from an acute angle onto goal, that might have been a surefire 1-1-0, one, one of course. But there was a th hint of offside, of, of and I, I have to give it to Fiorentina. They put Milan a lot of side. Uh, that's for sure, because uh, it, without the, that cohesion on the back, it would not have occurred. But Fiorentina um, gave, gave, gave it all. I don't want to say too, too, too to the credit card, because I mean, at the last few weeks, where was Fiorentina? With that, now they play at the San Siro, and can I say, I know 
Milan needs to have a new stadium. The San Siro is old, but there is something magic about it. A three o'clock afternoon kickoff at a full San Siro. Not the evening, the afternoon kickoff. Because you have the sunlight goal going in, you have you see everything, all the spectacle. It is just something else. It is truly magical, and it's probably the last time uh, this season, at least, that I, I can see that. I know Inter will probably also, but it, it, it just, everything. It was the right kick of time for me. Italy is playing three o'clock on a Sunday. It was the right stadium. Uh, it just all, it, it, it gives me all the um, feels in many ways. This is what for me Serie A is about. So first half, I give see a slight advantage to Fiorentina in terms of play. However, Milan had the better chances. And uh, the one that Giroud, I think Cassie played on to Giroud, who is alone in front of goal. And no, 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 Giroud, every time he gets the ball, he passes it back. But this time he went clear on goal. You need to make this one. I mean, you are the superstar striker. You got to make this goal. I know Giroud is probably tired because he has been playing way too much because Latin is also, all, also injured. So our uh, uh, old guy gang up front yeah that might actually play a little bit of a problem i also don't like that uh the entire defense is uh, you know one yellow card away from being suspended which is also not good for the running second half i gotta say it just felt when is the goal coming i mean uh chances after chances after chances was it case no it was leao who missed an absolute sitter where brahim diaz brilliant first touch but what he makes out of it, nothing. Uh, Rafa Leao, brilliant, running through. He is so talented. But he loses concentration, in my opinion, way too quick. If he stays on there, he, yes, the ball bounces, blah, blah, blah. But uh, he had a clear shot, 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 goal in early in the second half. You could have already made it 1-0. Uh, I think that was, especially the first 20 minutes, it was literally our, when are Milan going to score. And it reminded me so much of the Bologna home game. Uh, and it ne then needed to be uh, uh, an error in going uh, in the builder play from Fio Fiorentina that Leo in intercepts and runs on goal and makes it 1 0. The relief, I cannot tell you. I really saw this head, 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 heading towards a 0 0. Again, clean sheet. In the meantime, Magnon had to make a brilliant save. Magnon, uh, honestly, Magnon should be the starting keeper for France. He is the best keeper in Italy born on at the moment and I've, and uh to me he's definitely one of the one of one of the best in europe uh and just the fortitude in a way that milan you lose donnarumma your talismanic keeper and you get him Magnon, and no one no one at milan is missing donnarumma and saying oh wouldn't it wouldn't be great if he still was here no you can say stay where you are and a uh, fun thing, I mean, over the week, it was even that Don Donnarumma uh, is kind of, yeah, can, 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 can I come, come back to Milan? No, stay where you are. We don't need you. You can come as a backup goal, goalkeeper. Mike Magnon, um, shots up, yes, maybe a little bit in, 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 in the air because he is short, but he's a brilliant shot stopper and uh, the, his uh, kick outs, the accuracy that, 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 that he has, he absolute amazing and uh, the save that they uh, that, that made around the 75th also. Absolutely amazing. I didn't like McKessier, who actually played his ass off, uh, was uh, whistled, but I know, blah, 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 moved to Barcelona. He played ac ac actually well. Uh, Ibra didn't have as much of an impact. I think, uh, yes, uh, we also have to mention that uh, Mino Raiola passed away, and Ibra now is heavily linked with... Um, um, going into the age, ages of Mino Raiola. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I think his head was not uh, right there as well. Milan get the win, and you saw in the celebrations afterwards, this was big, and I said uh, to my wife, this will be the most important, because now five points clear of Inter. Inter needs to respond, and unfortunately, Inter did respond. Um, getting it back to two points, However, uh, it got to be said that um, while I think the win was all right, uh, the penalty, yeah, it probably was a penalty. Uh, 
that you know the penalty is missed uh it goes onto the uh upright and unfortunately the goalie uh touches it if he doesn't touch it lotara puts it in and it's two nil if if the goalkeeper wouldn't have put the touch on, on there the goal wouldn't would have counted it's a rule i didn't know i think it was a right i really was hoping that udine will pull one back through Puset. uh they pull one back through Puset or that they get the equalized but i think overall from what i could tell inter were the better team of course i was not I really hope for Inter to try to uh, mess up one more time. That much is for sure. So yeah, um, then I saw in the evening uh, Roma struggling against Bologna and Salernitana getting a point at Atalanta. They had a 1-0 lead for a long, long time as well. So um, now the standings is, it is a wave in for Inter, 62-38. So it's still 60-40 roughly in Inter's favor because of the um, tough program coming up. Um, we have Juve and Napoli are through because Roma drops the points. Juve are in the Champions League. Also, Napoli are also in the Champions League. Uh, I think the 1, 2, and 3, 4 is, may change uh, as well. For the Euro European spots, we have both Roman teams are at the moment uh, in the Europa League. So it actually wouldn't really matter if Roma wins the Conference League or not, except that it will be a trophy. Uh, Atalanta King on to the seventh spot where Fiorentina, uh, yeah, they may have a spot, uh, a chance there as well, but Fiorentina is also going a little bit off. Um, and then uh, does Verona still also have a chance? Potentially. They have a little bit to play for as well. But we got to look at the bottom. Uh, Cagliari and Salernitana, it's a toss up now. And if Salernitana win the game in hand against Venezia, they have the upper hand. They're still lower rated that, that's why. But it's more or less a toss-up between those two. Cagliari need to play Inter. That's not a, a, a good draw for sure. Uh, Genoa, as I said, uh, that Darb, Darb, Darb loss more or less means that they are down. And uh, the, the win also means that Sampdoria is safe. And Spezia also can call themselves uh, safe at this very, 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 very moment. Upcoming round, Inter against Empoli early, Genoa against Juve also early because they have the cup final midweek. So uh, that's something to look for for World War II. Another full week for Inter. I hope they are saving themselves and Empoli, you know, but uh, I, I, I don't see it. it. It may well be the Friday evening Inter have the lead in the table, at least temporarily, uh, which will put in a whole lot of trouble, uh, a whole lot of pressure, not trouble, onto Milan to respond in Verona. But before we go to that game, um, I'm looking at other interesting ones. Sassuolo uh, Un sticks out for some reason a little bit. Um, when I look, I look at them, looking where uh, Cagliari is playing Salernitana. That's a huge one. That's a massive, massive relegation battle uh, fight. Where <laughs> it's a head-to-head. -head. I mean, Salernitana. Whoever wins this one has the upper hand. So yeah. That's, that's a massive one right there. This year because I'm so focused on Milan playing uh, Sunday evening against Verona. Um, I think that's the game that they can draw. And then win out against Atalanta and against um, uh, Sassuolo at, at the end. I think this is, the, this is potentially the toughest game left. Although I don't want to discount Atalanta. But to me this seems like the toughest game left. Um... And there is unfortunately a little bit. I mean, as of late, going to Verona was never really a problem for for Milan, to be fair. However, there's some his, his history. Milan, uh, I think in '73 and in '90, uh, they were in first place, went to Verona, and lost the title there. But I think that's a long, long, long time ago. I actually think this is the game that you can probably afford to draw. But I'm. The way I see it, I actually could see Milan winning very well there. Now it depends a whole lot on what Inter did against Empoli there as well. And then we ended with a true classic between Fiorentina and Roma. This is one of the most storied games and one of the, uh, the best games, I think, in Italy to watch uh, in many ways. Um, so, yeah, just want to point out that one too, although there's not much to play for them. And yeah, there is actually... Because Fiorentina will need that win. And the Roma is coming back from the semifinal of the Conference League. Fiorentina will, that, will need that win to make sure that they play in Europe next season. Uh, also depending on what Atalanta is doing in Spezia. 
long video but loads to talk about um as you can definitely tell i'm absolutely giddy at this moment but now it is more nose to the grindstone keep your calm how do you think the title race will end uh as i said inter have empoli at home they have Cagliari away and some Doria at home i don't think they will drop any points so it's all down to milan that's what i'm saying Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!